The Anchor Solux F3800 is an outstanding pick as a whole home backup power solution. In a previous video, I showed you how to install a transfer switch to safely take the power out of your Solux and send it to selected circuits off of your home's main breaker panel. In today's video, I'm going to show you an alternative method to safely power your home off of your Anchor Solux through the installation of a generator interlock kit. Like a transfer switch, it is a safe code compliant way to power your home. However, instead of powering a selection of circuits, a generator interlock kit will actually power your home's entire breaker panel from one source. As always, if you choose to take on this project yourself but feel uncomfortable in doing so, please consult the help of a professional licensed electrician familiar with the codes in your area. Both a generator interlock kit and a transfer switch are designed to allow you to power your home off of a backup power source without sending that power back into the grid where it could cause damage or injure people working on the lines. Unlike a transfer switch, however, a generator interlock kit allows you to send power to all of the circuits in your home's breaker panel at once. It prevents the flow of power back into the grid by using a mechanical lock that will ensure that the main breaker coming into your home is in the off position before the breaker connected to the Solix can be switched on. While it doesn't offer you the same level of control that a transfer switch does, it does give you a greater ease of installation, which means that if you're looking for the quickest way to start enjoying the use of your Solix F3800 as a whole home backup power solution, the generator interlock kit is the choice for you. If a generator interlock is the right method for you, the next step is picking out the kit that will work with your breaker panel. To do that, you need to identify the make and model that you have in your home. In our case, we have a Leviton indoor load center. So we went out and picked up a Leviton generator interlock kit, as well as a 30 amp two pole breaker. The 30 amp two pole breaker corresponds to the 30 amp power inlet that we also picked up which will be able to handle the maximum output of our Anchor Solux F3800. However, if we were going to be stringing up multiple units of this, we would want to make sure that the combined power output of our Anchor Solux F3800s did not exceed the power handling of both our power inlet and the two pole breaker that we are installing with our generator interlock. These are most commonly available in 30 amp and 50 amp varieties. And what will work best for you depends on the loads you're powering in your home. In addition to the interlock kit and the two pole breaker, you're also going to need a few other odds and ends. You're going to need wire rated to the appropriate ampacity of whatever size inlet and breaker you're using. Because we're using a 30 amp inlet and 30 amp breaker, in our case, we'll be using 10 gauge wire here. You'll also want to pick up a cable for connecting your Anchor Solex to your power inlet. In our case, again, we have a 30 amp rated cable and that'll be able to easily safely handle the power out of our Solex. The first step in installing your generator interlock kit is selecting a location for the power inlet. The power inlet is where you will connect your Anchor Solix. And because we can operate the Anchor Solix indoors, unlike a conventional gas generator, we're able to find a location near our main breaker panel for ease of use. Now this building is still under construction, so the wires are still exposed and this install will be temporary. But because we want to use the back hole in the future, we'll go ahead and space it off the wall with a couple of blocks. It's important when you're selecting this location to realize that running the wires through your walls may require drilling holes through studs and even some drywall work to pull off a finished result that you're happy with. So be careful, a little bit of forethought here can save a lot of trouble down the road. Well, before we get started, now is as good a time as any to go over some of the tools you'll need if you wanna do this job yourself. Of course, basic hand tools like a drill, a driver, some wire cutters and stripping tools and of course the usual pencil and measuring tape. If you don't have these things, you might wanna reconsider taking on this project. Got our box screwed on. I'm gonna go ahead now, strip back the wires and make our connections into the back of our power inlet and then attach the cover. 
When wiring up the power inlet, make sure to remember that green is for ground, white is for neutral, and red and black are for the two hot lines. The same is true when wiring the breaker panel. All right, now we have our electrical connections made here at the power inlet, and we're ready to take this cover off and turn our attention to connecting the electrical inside the panel. Now that we have the power inlet installed, it's time to turn our attention to the breaker panel itself and install the actual interlock kit. What this does is it will bolt onto the top of the dead plate, which is this plate right here, and it is a physical device that prevents the main breaker from being in the on position at the same time as the breaker in this position. What we are going to be doing is swapping this breaker there for our tool pull breaker that will connect to the power inlet, the power coming in from our Solix, and this will make it so that anytime the Solix breaker is on, the main breaker has to be off and vice versa. In order to mount this, we're gonna to have to drill a couple of holes and use some self-tapping screws. And in order to make sure that everything lines up, this particular interlock kit comes with a hole drilling template right here. Some units come with physical metal templates that give you places to drill the holes. It'll vary, but they've got you covered either way. I'm gonna go ahead and kill the power to this panel, pull it off, set it on the bench, drill those holes, and I'll be right back with that. But before we can reinstall it, we're gonna have to slide these breakers up a couple of spaces, install our 30 amp two pole breaker, and get that wired on. At that point, we'll be ready to test this. All right, let's go ahead and get this panel off. Okay, there we go. We have gained access inside our breaker panel. And at this point, you wanna make double sure that your main breaker is in the off position because we don't wanna get shocked. With the power off, I was able to shift these breakers up two positions and make room for our new double pole 30 amp breaker, as well as installing the breaker hold down and get everything wired up, including the 10 gauge going down to our power inlet. I took the template and got the holes drilled on our panel cover and I was able to install the interlock, which you can see here, moving up and down. This is the device responsible for making sure that only the main breaker or the double pole 30 amp connected to the power inlet are on at one time. We never want those both on at the same time. Now that this is done, I can go ahead and reinstall this panel cover and we can put our system to the test and see how the Anchor Solix F3800 does powering this whole building. Now that we've got our main breaker panel cover installed, we can see just exactly how this interlock works. During normal operating conditions with the main breaker connected, the interlock does not move up. And since it doesn't move up, the breaker that connects the inlet in our Solex to the panel is stuck in the off position. When it's time to power our building off of the Solex, all we have to do is first switch the main breaker to the off position. That allows the interlock to slide up and with the interlock up, we can then turn on the breaker that connects the Solix to the panel, powering our whole building and giving us power when we need it most. Now that the interlock is installed, we know that we can connect our F3800 to the main panel safely without worry about back feeding to the grid, and it's really simple to do so. We simply take our extension cord, connect it to the power inlet that we installed earlier. The other end then goes into our 240 volt EV charging output right here. We hit the button that activates our AC output and then it's as simple as turning our main breaker to the off position, which allows the interlock to slide upwards. With the interlock in the upwards position, we can activate the breaker that connects the Solix to our main panel. And now we're powering this whole building off of our Anchor Solix F3800. Okay, we've had the Solix on for a minute now and all the loads have kicked on. We are pulling just over 1100 watts of power out of it, feeding down into our inlet through our interlock, and you can see we are operating off of that. And that is keeping everything in this shop powered up. It's a 2,400 square foot shop. Now when the power comes back online and it's time to resume normal grid tied operation, it's just the opposite of installation. We simply take our breaker that connects the Solix to the panel, flip it off, slide the interlock down, and then that lets us slide the main breaker back to the on position, tying us to the grid 
making sure the F3800 can't try to feed into it. Well, that's gonna conclude this guide on how to install a generator interlock kit to get you enjoying the benefits of your Anchor Solix as quickly as possible. If you like this type of content, make sure you like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with the latest from Anchor and all the ways to keep you living in power.